it's a tiny detail that's different in brightness and also perfectly defining different color, the color of hair. So on top of this, adding some colorizing effects would destroy this perfectly synchronized detail of contrast and color. Hi guys, my name is Borodante and welcome back to The Black Widow. Today I continue working on our latest version and this time I want to make sure we switch from this black and white painting plus colorizing vague layers into one merged layer to continue working with just full color details. So we're actually going for the latest group of stages of actually getting the painting done. So I think this is gonna be very exciting and we're already really close to it really. I'm thinking maybe to a bit redo this part over here. Like it feels a bit too uniform and like lacking something, like some ideas. There's a certain space for an extra idea in here. Especially this guy right here is just another back just like this one, it doesn't bring anything to the picture. And I think that's a waste. And if it's a waste, it's sort of a mistake. So I think I'm gonna change this. I wanna introduce more of the interaction the way we had it in here. So kids fighting, somehow maybe one is pushing another one away to get to the meat faster, that kind of stuff. And yeah, aside from that, I'll bring some of other parts of the painting to uh, like a base color, including the color of the skin of the widow, because right now she's not really colorized. Although I'm almost happy with what I have here. But yeah, more stuff like the copper basin or basket, whatever it is, it needs to be colorized too. Maybe the nests could use some colors, you know, they shouldn't be just gray. And yeah, one thing I already did in between the episodes is I applied this little filter right here that made the sketch sort of fade away and blend in better with the painting, which is something I mentioned before. I always have this struggle about like when I merge the sketch layer with the painting, painting, I end up having more problems from it than help. But in this case, before I merged it at all, I blurred it a lot. So the original was like this, as you guys remember. But even after that, using this filter, and the filter was, by the way, smart blur. So blur, smart blur, and it has this like in here, right? Um, just blurring applied, but uh, with a threshold, so we define how much, like how low of a contrast of edges should prevent the blur from happening. So if the threshold is really high, it's almost all blurry, but still like super high contrast stuff remains sharp. And I lowered it to about 50%, I think, which introduced some of the sharp edges, but the rest is kind of blended away. Kind of the way I like painting in general, like having defined edges and lost edges. It's a thing. And this, uh, this filter does exactly that, like a good kickstart for that. I don't know if it's a big deal or not, but that's something I'm going with. It doesn't really matter. We still have a lot of work ahead of us in terms of just painting things, you know? <laughs> Defining details with values, accurate values and uh, colors as well. So that's what we're going to do. After a word of today's sponsor. A new tutorial on wingfox.com called Character Painting in Photoshop. This course will teach you how to make sure your character turns out awesome. The highly skilled teacher, going by the name Big Bird, not only has an incredible portfolio, but is apparently really good at sharing their knowledge. The course goes very deeply and specifically about applying gesture drawing and perspective when building your new character. I really like the idea of using certain references just for the main gesture of the character. All lessons follow a great pattern of practical demos, followed by detailed theory explanation right after. So you can watch the master work and then get a clear explanation with special examples. The course is available to purchase right now before its full release for a special price of $39 with a $10 discount code. So if you're interested in character illustration, check out the affiliate link and the code in the description. Now back to the video.
Well, this went pretty cool so far. I decided to just go with some basic shape sketch instead of actual detail sketch, but I'm kind of confident that I can pull it off. Like right now, I'll add some details and I think it's gonna be pretty cool. See, I'm gonna define these guys. I think they work much better in here than whatever this was. Just This guy is just such a copy and paste of this one. So dumb. This is working way better. I think I can see right now I should make them like whiter. So I'm gonna work on that. Probably let's create a separate layer and just, um, I don't know, overlay or soft light even. Yeah, and I'll just cover all of their surfaces and maybe have to erase it a bit in the darkest parts. But generally that's a good way to lighten up the whole thing in black and white mode at least. I think it would work in color too. What about overlay? Yeah, there you go. Overlay kind of works better with the contrast in here. Then I'll just paint in much darker shadows since there will be more detail in the darkest part if the whole thing is brighter. Look at that, they actually blend in with other kids way better now. And here they were some kind of dark dudes and this is almost, almost except for they're made of plastic, two dummy dudes. Okay, this turned out pretty cool. I really like the new kids in here. Yeah, I had to build the actual structure of the head for the upper girl, apparently. Just so her facial features wouldn't fly all over the place. But yeah, I think in general it worked out really well. I think the main trick here is that I started with a pretty dynamic gesture sketch, I guess, gesture drawing. So I defined these tension points really well. And it worked out perfectly with the cloth tension and everything. So it looks pretty cool. Just need to make sure that I don't fail at anatomy too much because gesture is great but it needs to be physically possible <laughs> so i was gonna stay like this so far because they're apparently the most defined characters after the widow right now arguably even more defined than her one thing i thought about right now we have kids fighting in here and here and that's it feels like we really need these two guys to do something more aggressive than just standing like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make uh, this kid actually aggressively choking this one. So that will look appropriate for the situation. And yeah, um, I think I'm gonna remove this dress in here. There used to be like a dress piece of cloth on the shoulder of the small kid. We really don't need that anymore, I think. So like it's not visible in here anyway. So that's going away. Maybe I'll introduce it somewhere else, but honestly, I'm more, much more into just kids fighting right now. I don't know. The whole thing with the cloth is a little bit of a weak concept, I think. I mean, the concept is great, but visually it's not as striking. And I don't really think we have place for that right now.
Alright, that's good enough for the third kids fighting over there. Yeah, now I'm gonna just think through the colors and the best way I think I would do that is first of all I would think on the colors for the nests and for the copper thing using the layers that I already have or something and then I would merge all of it together including even this uh, gamma layer whatever it is because obviously it's involved in colors a lot gamma gamut main color scheme kind of thing atmospheric layer see i'm gonna merge it together and then add another layer in say multiply and add some blood color then add another layer in overlay and add some dirt marks on the clothing stuff like that so i'm gonna be just choosing what I want and all of these layers of color will be for introducing like an overall texture and the rich colorful aspect of the picture I guess. That's the plan at least. Also I kind of forgot to add at least one kid getting out of the nest. I can mark it in right now but generally we could go with it later since this is a background detail. An important one but it doesn't take a lot of changes to introduce so maybe I'll just add a little spot or something. added a lot of red including blood and uh, some kind of meat so this guy obviously finished eating his piece and probably just enjoying looking at the fight these guys are still fighting over the piece and this girl is just lucky to be right underneath the bucket and meat throwing action so she's covered with blood having fun here so yeah, I'm actually really enjoying the idea of like whenever I think of like I should add like dirt to the cloth right now. I just create a new layer, make it I guess multiply since it's gonna be darkening mostly. And I just go with like uh, what kind of color I would go for the dirt. I feel like it should be just graying kind of color so not something warm because they're warm already but more like desaturating like more of a blackish dirt hmm so the opposite of yellow we should pretty much go with that or maybe not i don't know there should be probably more than one color of dirt anyway but yeah i'm just gonna be introducing that around i don't want to like darken too much mostly just introducing some color yeah like that this is a nice color, like old bandages color. That's that's probably appropriate for this mess. So yeah, I'm just gonna add these all over the place. Armpits, around the necks. And this is the part when you just think through filling the picture with tiny ideas without a lot of dedication to all kinds of stuff, just thinking about the story. Probably sleeves should be really dirty and darker. Not black, the way I used to have in the original concept, where things were going really black. Not that, more of a like a realistic, you know, when poor kids in an orphanage, they walk around in the same clothes. The sleeves get really dirty and like elbows, some other parts. So I'll add that specifically as well. Oh, that's pretty nice. Adding some life to the picture in this area becomes a lot more present when we add some differences between colors of different parts of different outfits. Really cool. So yeah, this is a pretty interesting approach. I thought I'd just 
add, you know, basic colors and then just move on with painting in one. But really, it sort of never really ends. By going with this approach, you can keep doing this and slightly, a little by little, with certain layers, like with colors, I'm adding details, but also later on, as I'm gonna be defining certain geometry and like silhouettes, I will have less and less opportunity to add colors in separate layers, details in separate layers, because you can't really define the same edge twice. Like for instance, in here I have very specific details of hair, and it's really hard to colorize skin separate from hair. So if I'll go even further, like really detailing the geometry, like adding this kind of hair, like you see this hair right now, it has a strong definition in contrast, but also a very specific and precise color definition because it's a tiny detail that's different in brightness and also perfectly defining different color, the color of hair. So on top of this, adding some colorizing effects would destroy this perfectly synchronized detail of contrast and color. So by defining this, I'm pretty much putting it in stone? Is that the expression? Like, I won't be able to just fly around and have fun with adding colors and different layers and whatever. It's over. For that little detail, I mean. But yeah, just knowing that and kind of like just feeling through this particular technique or the, the style of defining details, you kind of start getting a hang of it in a way really cool. You can really use it to your advantage. By the way, another thing I'm never defining so far is highlights. Not a single highlight present in this picture, everything is matte. All the skin, all the hair, I think one little part in here I got carried away and this is pretty much a highlight on the nose. And that's not really good because that's a wrong color for the highlight, it shouldn't have that color. It should have a, like a pale color of the light source and that means you should define it after you're done with overlaying all this stuff because this is another type of detail that like the color of the light source let's say is just pale white cold white right something like sky color so if i'm adding it in here this immediately looks like highlight not just a bright spot on the nose we can see that this is a different color because it's a reflecting bit something like that like it's not a very good design of the spots but the point with the color and the brightness i think is pretty clear so that's another thing that you should be careful about and really add it when you can see that all the details with all the colors are really settled like you're not searching anymore then you're really rendering the material right now i'm not rendering materials i'm rendering kind of like colors before that i was rendering lights in the like black and white mode like overall lights without actual details and here i started adding some details with color and later on there will be rendering of actual materials with highlights smaller textures of materials and stuff like that so it feels pretty natural to do all of this uh, the way it goes really want to add like all these highlights on the hair it looks immediately awesome when you do it but i shouldn't i think although many things feel like they're pretty much here to stay but who knows Generally, another big thing about reflections and all that is the, the Fresnel effect, my beloved Fresnel effect, which I'll add on all of these like round surfaces that are curving away. This is a perfect place for the Fresnel effect and it should be pale. It shouldn't be just covered with the color of the cloth the way I did initially. That I could only do with the lighting definition that I had before, but now I can add these more a pale Fresnel effect rim details. All right, I think this was pretty fun and we have switched from black and white with colors to actually defining everything in one layer. Still, somewhat surprisingly to me, it makes a lot of sense to introduce a new layer every now and then in whatever mode is convenient to add certain details and then going back into one layer and keep working further. 
This is actually really exciting because I really like the picture, the way it turns out. And we finally have everything defined really well and we can move on with just actually getting to the final picture. I really love the fact that I decided to fix interactions of the kids in this spot and in there a little bit, so now things make a lot more sense. And here they were just all standing in line with just these two idiots fighting. But this makes a completely different story. This now all together makes sense, telling the same dynamic full story. Really cool. So tell me guys what you think, am I missing on something else, moving on to this um, pre-final stage I guess, I don't know, going pretty careful here, but yeah, it's, it's getting done a lot faster than I was expecting actually, because <laughs> I don't know what to expect anymore, this thing is infinite and it's getting done. So ahead of me is just a lot of detailing of every kid, every hair, and all that. The dress of the widow will take some cool highlights, that'll be awesome. Some really cool cobweb textures on these nests will look also really cool, like I defined a little bit of these um, connections in here that are holding the nests in place, but there will be more of a texture like that all over these bubbles, so that's gonna be pretty awesome. But for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I'm just really loving this part now. It was so blunt before, like it, it made no sense right in the middle of the picture, there's just nothing. But now it's such a cool dynamic in here, important detail and looking really cool. I think it really saved the picture a little bit.